In this video, we're going to explore how to make templates in JSF, which will give us a uniform look and feel for our website. Now, what a template does is allow us to make a standard look and feel with maybe some standard uh, top navigation, side navigation, and then privacy policy and terms of use at the bottom of every page. That's a template that we make, and then the content in the middle is what changes from page to page. And what's nice is that that lets us focus on just that content in the middle. Now, the page that you're looking at now, plantplaces.com, was designed around 2006. And what you see is kind of a common look and feel around 2006, which was a top nav that stays where it is and a left nav that stays where it is. But to be honest with you, this page is too busy. Uh, if I were to redesign this page, I would probably take away the left nav entirely, uh, have a simpler top nav, and not have so many words on the page. When you come here, it's not very obvious what you want to do first, and I realize that's a bit of a UI faux pas. So let's not replicate that, but we do want to replicate a standard look and feel throughout. Take a look as I search on Redbud. You'll notice that the left nav and the top nav stays, stays consistent, except this title and the top nav does change to be context sensitive. So when I hit search, that changes to plantplaces.com results of your plant search. But the navigation on the side and on the top stays the same. One other reason why we like this kind of template with CSS is take a look at this view printer friendly version no pictures if I click on that that's the same thing I'm going to get in a plant in a print preview what's interesting if you look at the URL this is the exact same page you were looking at before simply with a different style sheet the style sheet is meant so you could print a list take it into a nursery and you're not going to have all that navigation you're not going to have the photos it's simply going to be black and white. So these two, this page you're looking at here, and the page that we just came from, those are actually the exact same page with the CSS just turning off and turning on uh, certain things. So that's what we want to look at. Now the ingredients that we need are going to be broken down into three categories. First of all, the CSS, the cascading style sheet, that's going to determine where everything goes on our page. Next, a template. There's going to be one and only one of these. It's going to contain a series of divs. So a div is just a section in an HTML page. And like anything in HTML, it can have an ID. An ID is a unique identifier. It has to be unique per element. In other words, we can't have the same ID on two different elements. That's going to coordinate two things. Number one, the CSS style that we've defined above. Number two, it's going to be a named or a labeled place where we can push in content. Okay, more on that in just a minute. The UI insert tag says, okay, this is where we can push in content from our content pages. Okay, now what do I mean by content page? Well, first we said there's going to be one and only one template. We could have multiple, but ideally it's going to be a small number of templates, whatever it is. There are going to be many content pages. And these content pages are going to be the pages that make up, say, index, search, results. They're going to be the stuff that changes within the template. So the content pages that we're going to have to have, first of all, are going to need this UI composition element, which says, this is the template I want to marry up to. And then they're also going to have a UI define element, which says, this is the div in the UI insert where I want to push my content. So a template looks something like this. We have our body tags. We have our divs. Our divs are coordinated by CSS. And then the insert says, this is what is going to be replaced by the content pages, each of the individual content pages. An individual content page might look like this. And the top div, I want to push in this information. And the left div, I want to push in this information. And in the content div, I want to push in this information. So with that, let's get started.
In my virtual machine, I have a uh, my notepad with a few things we're going to need. First of all, the library we're going to need for the composition and the defined tags. Secondly, a sample template page. These are pretty straightforward. Honestly, I just grabbed one off the web because all we need is uh, the normal overhead information, import our CSS, and uh, then how we want to divvy up our page. So you can grab one of these and, and modify it as needed, which is what I'm going to do. Now, a side note, when I make these recordings, I typically take the tags I know I'm going to need to type, and I put them into a notepad file like this to make the recording go faster so you don't have to wait for me to look things up and then type them out. I've received a couple emails this week where people said, hey, could you make that text available to us because I had to pause the video and type it all by hand in my own environment. Uh, certainly I don't want you to have to type it by hand or anything like that. This is already available, actually, though, and that's why after each lecture I commit to GitHub. Uh, so if you go to github.uc.edu uh, slash and then jonesbr or just search jonesbr in, in github.uc.edu, go to my repositories and go to 15FS4045, and this is the project. I typically do try to commit and push after each lecture, so you can see the POM for instance, that I'm using in this project is updated here. Uh, the web XML, you just go under web content and um, web INF, and then web XML, application context, faces config. Any configuration that you see me do on these videos is freely available to you because I have this repository marked public, uh, and it's also linked from Blackboard. Okay, let's start with the template. I'm going to go ahead and grab this text here. I'm going to copy, and I'm going to run up to our project, which is Plant Places, and I'm simply going to go to Web Content, right-click, and say New, and then say HTML File. Uh, we'll go ahead and call it template.xhtml, and Next, and yeah, that's fine, but we're going to go ahead and just do a complete rewrite of this file anyway. Control A backspace, control V, control M, so I can look at it in high def. So I have a top section here, I have a left, and I have a content. Uh, I guess the left nav, well, here's the thing is that I want to go ahead and keep that top left and content, and I'm going to add a bottom as well. And one reason is, if we take a look at prime faces, there are some really nice navigation that we could put in the left and in the right. Uh, let's see, believe one second. Uh, if we take a look, here is a Prime Faces showcase of their menu. Take a look at this one. If I go to Menu, and then we click on the Slide menu, it gives you something like this. On a web page, that's really cool. It's very similar to the kind of nav you would see on a phone. And that might be something that we want to put at the bottom of all of our pages. Additionally, we'll typically have some kind of copyright and some kind of privacy policy. Always a good idea to have those. Uh, so we could have left nav like this, top nav, whatever we want to do. And then the content is going to go right in this area to the right of the left nav, obviously below the top nav, and above whatever kind of note we have at the bottom. So, uh, first things first, we just need to wrap those in divs. We can make a CSS style sheet later that will put them in the appropriate place. So I'm going to go ahead and borrow this div ID content, and I'm going to paste, and I'm going to say simply div ID bottom. Okay. Class equals, we'll just say uh, uh, bottom, that's fine. Okay. Uh, UI insert name equals bottom. And then I might just put some text here that says copyright 2015 plantplaces.com. And then it's, you know, I might as well go ahead and add a link to a privacy policy because any web page should have that. Now I'm going to add a prime faces styling very soon. So I want to include the prime faces library in here. I'm going to control M and I'm going to find another page where I've included the prime faces tags. It looks like I have in results. So XML and SP. Do you see this? XML and SP within the HTML tag. That says that 
any tag that starts with a P and then a colon is a prime faces UI tag. So to use the prime faces elements, the things like that bottom nav we were just looking at, I need to make sure I have this XML and SP up where I have my HTML tag. So let me go back to template now and paste. And that's going to include this P tag library. So now I can come back down here. Uh, let me control M. So whoops, control M so we can see this in high def. I'm going to say P colon. And then I'm going to say link. I'll say outcome. Whoop, you know, I'm sorry, I need to put that in a tag, don't I? Okay, P colon link. Outcome equals, and then we're going to say uh, privacy. And then we're going to say uh, value equals privacy, policy, and terms of use. Okay, and then we'll simply terminate that tag. Okay, and how did I know that was the correct syntax? I went to the Prime Faces Showcase, and I simply looked at their link option, and that's what it has. So uh, you see the text is what you see in, in value. See bookmark there, there's an example, and you see bookmark is the value. The outcome means what's going to happen when you click on it. So notice when I mouse over bookmark, look at what comes up down here when I mouse over bookmark up here. You see it says product detail.xhtml, and that matches up to product detail right here. So what I'm saying here is I want to make a link to privacy.xhtml, and it's going to say privacy policy in terms of use. That's the text it's going to say. So let me go ahead and choose save, and now I'm going to control M, and I'm going to go back to index.html, and we need to make some changes here. Control M again. Let's decide what we actually need uh, in the content area and what we don't need at all. So first of all, uh, if I take a look at that template XHTML, uh, we know that the main content is in this area named content. Okay, that's what we're pushing all of our information into from the index page. Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm going to go to my little scratch pad here, and I know I need to borrow a couple tags. UI composition, okay, so I'm going to borrow that. Uh, actually, I'll, tell, I'll just go ahead and type that one out, although you know what, yep. I double check to make sure I need, I need one more XML and S here. I need one more tag library imported. It's this guy right here. So the XML and S, that represents our tag library that we want to use. I'm already using the JSFH library and the Prime Faces P library. Now I need to add one more. This UI library is what gives me this uh, templating. So I add my UI library. Okay, now I'm going to take a look in here where I have body. I'm going to put UI colon, and then let's see. We want UI colon and then composition. Okay, and then we have template equals uh, template equals template.xhtml. Okay, template equals template.xhtml. What that's saying is, hey, this template.xhtml, I want that to be my master page. And then I'm pasting all of my content in between this composition. Okay, so let me control shift F. In Eclipse, that, uh, that will format things for us. You see it gives us nice indentation uh, around all of our HTML. Maybe it could be a little bit neater, but oh well, it'll work okay for now. Okay. <coughs> now, first of all, I say I want to use this template, template.xhtml. Okay, and that's a good start. But now I have to say specifically where does this go in the template. And that's this UI insert name equals content. Okay, to specify what goes in there, I need a UI define tag that looks like this. So I'm going to run back here, and in index.html, I'm going to say, we'll go ahead and paste UI define name equals content. Okay, and rem remember that name matches up with this right here. Okay, with the insert ID. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close off, let's see, I close off this tag, slash UI, colon, whoops, UI defined, looks like it filled it in for me there, and save. So now I'm saying take all this stuff 
and put it in that content area in our template. Now if we take a look at the template, notice that it has its own title, and we also have this little top section here. So UI insert name equals title, and UI insert name equals top. Okay, if I take a look at index, it doesn't need to have its own title anymore, does it? It doesn't need any of this head stuff or anything like that. So I'm going to clean things up a little bit. I'm going to remove that title. And what I'll do is I will simply add another UI define tag. And we're going to say name equals title. And we're going to say this is our index page. So we're simply going to say plantplaces.com promoting plant diversity through education. Okay. And then I'll also maybe say UI define name equals top. And we'll go ahead and replicate that in the top for now. We'll probably add a little bit of navigation to that later, but we will go ahead and just add, uh, add that same text in our top area as well. So we're defining title, top, and content. We have not put anything in for the left nav, which at the moment we're just going to keep kind of a marker there. Uh, we've all, Sorry, I'm on the wrong one. We've also not defined anything for bottom, but that's okay because we're already happy with what we have on the bottom. A copyright and then a privacy policy. And I choose save. No cascading style sheets just yet, uh, but uh, we have enough to take a look at. So let's take a look at our, at our application. I'm going to refresh this page. Uh-oh, uh, no tag was defined for name link. It looks like it's having some trouble with that P styling I had before. I'm going to change that back to H just for the moment, and we'll, we'll take care of that when we actually apply a theme. The video is getting a little bit long to worry about that at the moment, so I'll just change it to H. Additionally, I'm going to add a BR tag, which is going to give me a line break here. Okay. And I'm going to save, and let's go back and re-render that page, okay, and refresh. And now you see we're starting to see the page come together. First of all, one moment, I just need to bring the library, uh, the uh, bring the video up. You can see the title is now properly plantplaces.com promoting plant diversity through education. We have our header here, uh, we have our content, we have our copyright at the bottom and then privacy policy in terms of use. Now you might notice that that privacy policy in terms of use is not an actual link. And the reason is JSF is smart enough to check for us and it notices that we do not have a uh, page called privacy. So let's very quickly make a page called privacy. I'm gonna borrow the text that I already have in my index.html, right click, control M, sorry, and then right click and then say new and then say HTML file, and we'll call this privacy.xhtml. Oops, x, h, x, a. Need to take my vitamins, xhtml. And uh, we'll go ahead and choose finish because we're just going to do a control A, control V. Okay, now here we're going to keep the same general form. Uh, in other words, we're going to keep the UI defined as we have it for content. And I'm just going to put in some text that says privacy policy in terms of use. Okay, don't sue us. Okay, that is all. So just a little uh, placeholder at the moment, but I also want to change my title and my top to show how those can be punched in as needed. So plainplaces.com, privacy policy and terms of use. So that's going to be the new title that goes in the title bar of your browser. Uh, let's also change the top nav here to show plainplaces.com privacy policy in terms of use. Very simple page. Everything else is fine. We don't need a sep uh, separate head section. We don't need anything like that. All we need is this content. Save and we'll go back and we'll refresh this page. And you see now that that privacy policy page does exist, Faces realizes that and it turns this into an actual link. So I click on the link and pay attention to the title up here and also the title in our tap, top nav. Click on the link. You see that now the title in our uh, browser is privacy policy in terms of use. 
the top nav has changed. It's in the same area, the same formatting, which we'll play with in our next video. But you see the top nav has changed, and you see that our content in the middle has changed. So one template serving two different pages. And as we go through and style this with CSS and uh, some prime faces styling, we'll see a consistent look and feel throughout our entire application. So that wraps up our video on templating. In the next video, we're going to see how to use cascading style sheets to give this a consistent style throughout. I look forward to seeing you then.